Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of Power Platform TV. So today we're gonna to take a look at webhooks. So in D365, we have the ability to subscribe to events that happen in the system. So for example, let's say a lead is created, we can subscribe to the event of that lead being created, and we can then go ahead and do things based on that, right? And this concept is not new, uh, this is typical plugin registrations, we can uh, create plugins that will subscribe to events in the system and then do things. And what we're gonna look at today is actually the, the webhook functionality in D365. So we'll see that it's incorporated within the plugin registration tool and it'll work in a kind of a similar way, but uh, it'll give us a, a different range of capabilities. So first thing we're going to do is open the plugin registration tool and let's see where this webhook functionality resides, right? So I'm going to just connect up to an organization and let me select my org here. Okay, and we are connected up into the uh, plugin registration tool, right? So now if we click on register over here, we see we have these various different options. And, and one thing I want to uh, make sure you do is download the latest plugin registration tool, right? Because there's some kind of bugs that get fixed over time. And I did notice one bug with the uh, the register webhook functionality here, but there it is. There's the register new webhook. And basically this is gonna give us the ability to go and register the webhook and then we can uh, use the webhook based on events that we're subscribing to, okay? So, so there it is here and if I clicked on it, I'll just show you real quick. It's gonna ask us for a name of the webhook and an endpoint URL, and then the authentication that we can provide, okay? So we're gonna come back to this. So I'm gonna click cancel here. And what we're gonna do first is we wanna create a uh, HTTP listener that will basically be invoked when the webhook runs, okay? So there's two ways we can do this um, that I'm gonna show at least anyway. There's a, a Power Automate flow that we can create, and then there's also Azure functions that we can invoke, right? So we'll go through each of these, and uh, let's take a look at how this all fits together, okay? Okay, so our first starting point is uh, Power Automate here. So if you go to powerautomate.microsoft.com, you'll end up here, and then we can uh, click on My Flows, and we'll create a new flow. Okay, so the first thing we'll wanna do is start here at powerautomate.microsoft.com. And then we'll go over to my flows and we're gonna create a flow here. And I'm gonna click new flow, uh, automated cloud flow. And here we can provide a name for the flow and uh, and the trigger. And I'm, I'm just gonna click skip. So it's gonna take us over to the designer. And then from the designer, we will be able to uh, select um, the, the triggers, okay? So the trigger that we wanna create is an HTTP request here. So if you search for HTTP, you'll see this request here, and it's actually this one here as well. It says when an HTTP request is received, right? So that's our trigger. Then we're going to go and do something, okay? And we can see here that this is the, uh, it says here that the URL will be generated after save. So once we go and save this flow, we'll actually be given a URL that will be the HTTP endpoint that will be, uh, that can be invoked whenever we want it to, right? So, so what we're gonna do is when the request comes in, let's add a new step and we can, uh, let's do something really, really simple. We'll just send an email, okay? So if I look for Outlook, uh, we have here, send an email. So I'm just gonna click on this one and it's authenticating. And here, okay, we have the, the two and the subject and the body, right? So if I do, uh, I'm just gonna send this to myself here. So I click on that, and then the subject, we can put um, uh, HTTP request received. And down here in the body, we will just add the body that comes from the HTTP request here. So I'm just gonna put that in there. So if we get anything, uh, we'll just have that in the body, okay? Um, now I'm just gonna call this uh, HTTP request demo, and then let's go ahead and save this and the flow is now saved. Okay, so now it's ready to run, okay? And if we go back into this, we'll see here that this is the URL that's been provided to us, right? 
So we have this big URL and we're gonna use this shortly. Um, but basically, yeah, we, we can copy it here and then we'll have the URL, okay? Okay, so we have that ready to go. And then uh, let's just go ahead here and click on this and we'll copy the URL. And now let's go back over to uh, the plugin registration tool. And we'll go ahead and register this webhook, okay? So I'm gonna click register, register new webhook, and we'll give this a name. And let's do this on the, uh, let's say the update of an account or the creation of an account, okay? Um, so first thing we're gonna do is we'll give this a name. I'm just gonna say uh, create, you know what, let's do it on a contact. So I'm gonna do create contact webhook and the endpoint URL. So if I paste this in here, we'll see that uh, this URL has uh, the base URL here. And then we have some um, other parts to this URL. And then here is where we're passing through parameters in the query string, right? So you can see here these parameters. So what we're, we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, take everything from the right of this and we're gonna put this into our keys and values here, okay? So I'm just gonna cut that out there so it should look like that. And then we can paste this into Notepad and then we'll basically be copying these values here, right? So we're gonna do API version. So we're gonna create a new key for this. So we'll add property API version and we'll copy this across. And then we'll go and click and add a new property. I'm gonna take SP here. And this part here is kind of interesting. We have these uh, uh, characters here. So we wanna do, um, take this up to here. We're gonna paste this in like this. And then instead of percent two F, we're gonna change that into a forward slash, okay? So we're going to do like this, like this, like this. Now let's add a new property. And now we got this SV is equal to 1.0. So we can just type in 1.0. Then we'll add a new property. And then we got the SIG is equal to this. So let's type in SIG is equal to this okay and let's just change the uh, authentication here to query string and we're gonna click save so that's created the webhook down here so now we want to go ahead and create a new step for this so if we just right click and register a new step and here is where we're gonna say on the create of a contact we're gonna run this webhook and we can just do a synchronous post operation, that's fine. So let's click register step. And that's done there. And, and one thing you just wanna check, if you just go back into the webhook here, double click on it, just make sure that these keys are still there, right? Cause uh, there is a bug out there, it seems p potentially with the older versions of the um, plugin registration tool where these get wiped out and you just can't save them, okay? So it should look like that, let's click cancel and it should be ready to go now. So we can just go into D365 and create a contact and see if this runs. So let's try it out. Okay, so here we are in Customer Service Hub. I'm just gonna go and click New here and let's go and create a new contact and let's just go ahead and save it. Okay, so the contact was saved. And if there was any errors, we'd actually see them pop up right there and then. So if the webhook was not configured properly, we would um, probably get some feedback straight away, okay? So it seems like it's run. Now let's just, let's just go back over to Power Automate and let's just see if this actually was invoked. So we can see here it says succeeded and it did actually run. So if we click on it, we can take a look here and it says that everything ran as expected. We can click on here and we can see here is the body that's um, being received, right? So this is being passed over from D365 into our flow. And uh, let's just take a look at what we get back here. Looks like we get a lot of good stuff uh, regarding the 
customer, right, that was created, the contact that was created. So yeah, these are all the fields that are related to the, to the contact. Uh, if I go ahead and search for Bob, we'll probably find, yeah, first name Bob, full name Bob. So that's our guy, right? Um, then the, the email ran and basically that all looks good as well. And if we actually go over to our email, let's take a look at it. We should see that we received an email and there's the email. And in the body of the email, we actually put the, uh, the body that was coming in from the request, right? So everything's in there and that looks good and this is cool. So now we're getting uh, webhooks uh, from uh, D365 into Power Automate Flow. So in the next video, I'm gonna show you guys what this looks like with an Azure function. Hope you guys enjoyed. So that's it guys. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and of course, check out my blog at carlbasuza.com.